Hey everyone, Nick Espinoza, your Chief Security Fanatic here, and today we are talking about the latest U.S. Senate Intelligence Report because it details remarkable contact between the Trump campaign and Russian spies, and this is what's going on. Now, this is coming from a ton of reporting sources, and I am going to start right out of the gate to say a couple of different things. As I have mentioned in previous videos and podcasts and all of that, I am simply reporting what has been reported in multiple places. I am not getting into politics in here. You can make up your own mind. If you love the president or hate him, these are the facts on the ground, and I will literally leave it up to you to make your own conclusions here. Now, basically, my second point here before we actually begin is to thwart the whole hyperbolic nature of the era that we live in, I'm going to say this right now out of the gate, the report itself does not purposely come to a final conclusion about whether there was enough evidence to that basically the Trump campaign either coordinated or conspired with Russia, excuse me, with Russia to sway the election towards Donald Trump and away from Hillary Clinton. It basically leaves its findings open to interpretation. And so again, I'm leaving that to you. But what it did find was that there was a lot of things that the Trump campaign could have used and did exploit, not saying they conspired. Now, this also mirrors the Mueller report, which laid out all of the evidence, but did not make a conclusion against the sitting president, that would be President Trump, as Mueller believed that was out of scope for his investigation. I am saying that out of the gate because I do not want my feeds uh, in my comment sections in all of my social media to devolve into either I am a shill for one side or the other or arguments between people. You decide on the facts that have been laid out by virtue of this report. And so with that out of the way, let's talk about the logistics of the report before we discuss the findings. So point number one, this was a bipartisan probe that was led by a Republican senator, in this case, Marco Rubio of Florida. And, and basically, this was also the fifth and final report that was released from Marco Rubio's uh, intelligence committee. Point number two, this investigation took roughly three years to complete. The panel leaders said that they wanted to be as thorough as possible in documenting what is essentially an unprecedented attack on U.S. elections. The third point I'm going to make here before we dive into the findings is that this Republican-led committee called it, and I quote, the most comprehensive description to date of Russia's activities and the threat they posed. And my final point before we dive in is that while Mueller's investigation was a criminal probe, the Senate investigation was a counterintelligence effort with the aim of ensuring that this kind of interference wouldn't happen again. That's obviously beyond important since we are going into the 2020 election. And so here are the findings coming from various sources that I've read on this, but I'm cribbing primarily from both the Associated Press and CyberScoop. Now, among the striking sections of this report is the committee's description of the close professional relationship between former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort and Konstantin Kimmelnik, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right, who the, uh, who the committee describes as a Russian intelligence offer. And to quote the report exactly, Taken as a whole, Manafort's high-level access and willingness to share information with individuals closely affiliated with the Russian intelligence services, particularly Kilimanik, uh, represented a grave counterintelligence threat. The report also notes how Manafort shared internal Trump campaign polling data with Kilimanik, saying that there is some evidence that Kilimanik may have connected uh, uh, may have been connected to the Kremlin's operation to hack and leak Democratic emails, also known as the Podesta leak, though it does not describe that evidence in the report that it released to the public. In addition, the report says, and I quote, Two pieces of information, end quote, raise the possibility of Manafort's potential connection to those operations, 
But basically, they blacked out and redacted that uh, to the public, which means that's only for internal use in the U.S. government as well. Now, both men, both Kilimanik and Manafort, were charged in Mueller's investigation, but neither was accused of any tie to the actual hacking of the DNC or the DCCC, which has been verified, and I will get to that. The Senate panel also said that it assessed the lawyer, Natalia Veselnoskaya, um, and has, and I quote, significant connections to the Russian government, including the Russian intelligence services, as did another uh, participant in that specific meeting, if you recall, back in the day during the campaign, Reinat Akhmedshin, and I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly. The panel said that it uncovered connections that were, and I quote, far more extensive and very concerning uh, than what has publicly been known end quote, particularly regarding Veselnitskaya, uh, obviously who, who made some waves back when the, uh, when the 2016 election was taking place. Now, the report also found no reliable evidence for uh, now President Trump's longstanding supposition that Ukraine had interfered in the election, but it did trace some of the earliest messaging of that theory to Kilmanik. Or again, I'm trying to pronounce that correctly. The report also said that the Russian government proxies were, and I quote, consistently spreading overlapping false narratives, which sought to discredit investigations into Russia interference in the 2016 election, which is a huge, huge thing. Now, in the aftermath of this release, we then basically get into statements by both the Republican contingent, and remember, the Republicans led that because it's the Senate, so they control the committees, as well as the Democratic response to what either side thinks and believes. And I am not going to get in there, uh, you know, into, into each side's, let's say, supposition or opinion on the official report. You can do that yourself. But, but basically, a lot of this has been put to bed, including the fact that Russia did indeed, indeed interfere with the 2016 election. Obviously, the report saying that there was not evidence for conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russians, but they absolutely did that. That is basically default facts now, according to both Republicans and Democrats on that committee. And so hopefully... 2020 will be more secure. We have seen a lot of hacking that was basically uh, in the 2016 election that was verified outside of the United States government intelligence services. Internally here in the United States, CrowdStrike confirmed that APT29 from Russia, also known as Fancy Bear or Cozy Bear, had indeed hacked the DNC and the DCCC. But even prior to that, in 2014, Dutch intelligence services AIVD started tracking APT or Advanced Persistent Threat 29 Cozy Bear or Fancy Bear that is now apparently going by a new moniker called the Dukes, which I had talked about in a previous video slash podcast a couple of days ago. And so I say all of this to lay all of this out is that we cannot put our heads in the sand and we cannot be ignorant to the cyber threats that, that foreign state sponsors uh, are are into an election here in 2020 in the United States. We have to make sure that our elections are secure, free, honest, and open, and all of those kinds of things. And I have been disappointed, as I have stated multiple times, that the Senate in the last few years has not passed any election security bills to enhance or strengthen our election. But here we are. We have a report that has taken over three years or roughly three years to compile. It is a bipartisan effort with bipartisan members agreeing that this is basically uh, the facts on the ground. And so I will leave the rest up to you. I am not going to get into the politics here. You can love or hate the president, as I've mentioned before. That is not my job. These are the facts on the ground. Cybersecurity, my job, is agnostic to politics. Everybody needs it. So you tell me what you think. I'd be curious to hear. And please be civil in my comments section because we are not going to adjudicate each other's beliefs. We want to talk about the facts. I would really appreciate that. And so that is your just amazing news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.